This little demonstration is going to show you how to use your pallet knife for rocks and grass and trees. Now, some people are having a little difficulty with that, so I thought I would do one focusing on that. And we're going to do a whole painting. It's a little bigger than normal, uh, so you can see it better. And also I'll use, remember, 300 pound Arches uh, paper. I'm using um, hot press, but medium is the easiest to use, so cold press or medium. Um, and I've only used four colors. Antwerp blue, uh, alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, and a little bit of yellow. Uh, so those are the four colors that I use. And uh, you'll see how we go from start to finish. It's a little longer than normal. And, uh, but anyway, I think it'll help you use the, the palette knife. And uh, so here we go. Let's uh, put in the sky. We're gonna have some light coming here going out through. Remember, always start outside and work in. Like so. And just lift your brush. Just use the tip of it. And you can mix right on your uh, paint. And like this is a different color now, right? Because the clouds have lots of color in them. The sky is not the critical thing here. I'm a little more blue here. All right. And now we'll let it flow. I'll bring it up close so you can see how it flows. And you can let it flow however you like to get the desire you like. You can tip it one way. Oh yes, you didn't see that. See, see how it runs? Tip it back down, this is the opposite way. And back and forth. There's hardly, um, most of my watercolors, I don't put a lot of uh, brush strokes in the skies. It's mainly a few sweeps here and there, then let the paint flow and you get all kinds of nice effects. And if it's too dry, like this here, I want it to run more, just give it a little squirt. Make sure you have a good squirt bottle. And, and look, see it run now. You want a fine mist when you spray. And catch the drips. That's good enough for the sky. This is going to dry back quite, uh, you, quite a bit. You can have your sky really quite dark. People think that... Uh, now this is going to be a very pale sky if I leave it like it is. It'll be drying out very pale, but I want a little darker, so I'm going to add some more Antwerp blue, a little risen crimson, a little, a little burnt sienna, and I'll just give it another Sweep here. And another one here. Oops, not enough paint. Gotta have lots of paint. And we're gonna make this these brush strokes a little more a little on the pink side. We'll just leave that. Collect the drips. And we'll just tilt it a little. I don't want a hard edge there. See that? Compared to the rest of it. Now it's not. It does It's not a problem if it stays there because you know sometimes you get the clearing in the sky, and then you'll have um, a cloud that streaks right through. So there's no right or wrong. It's what you like. And when you get what you like, you stop. And if you want to, uh, well, I might as well show you this. Take this brush here I don't use for painting. I just use it for fixing things. Like I'm going to get rid of that sharp edge right there. See if I go like that? See how I got rid of that? Now you make sure you clean your brush uh, before you go sweeping again because if you don't, there's paint on there and then you put it in a light spot and you're gonna have a big problem. Okay, so there we go, clean that out. Now I have my brush ready for the next round. Now I'm going to wash my brush out because I want to use some yellow base down here. And how's it coming? It's a little dry down here. But I'll just 
get that. I want to give that a little squirt. So oh, I don't have that up in the right position. There, I just squirted my paper down here because it's a little dry. We'll just let that run up there. Um, this, this is not the, not the critical thing. Now I'm going to add some yellow orange because uh, I want this to come through after we uh, after we do the uh, with the palette knife. And then I'm adding some uh, burnt uh, brown matter. I love brown matter. Now anybody that lives where you have the fall colors, and see I'll have this winding in. There's the, the uh, I'll leave this white so you wind in around. Anybody that lives where the, you get the fall colors uh, in, in Nova Scotia, we get the huckleberry and blueberry bushes. And they leave uh, beautiful colors. Uh, now I'm going to add some lizard crimson up here because that's where along the edges you get those huckleberry and blueberry bushes. Oh boy, when the frost hits them. So we're going to leave that. Now we're going to put in the trees. So I'll use my burnt sienna and my Antwerp blue that makes a nice green for my trees and all that's just flowing you see this is flowing it's running down now if I turn it sideways we get rid of that but I'm not worried about that today I want to I'll leave that and use them using my nice this is an inch and a half brush now watch you just paint your trees in like so just, just some nice strokes like so we can make those higher I need more paint. I'm going to leave some light so we go through the Hogarth curve, right? Now these are now if you get too blue, that's all right. Don't panic. Just take your burnt sienna and add right on top of it. Look, that's the beauty of a big brush. And you can just remember up so your trees and don't swing out. Keep it straight, or if anything, swing in. And uh, see, look, it just, just flows beautiful. Now uh, that's some more paint. Make sure they're not soldiers. I tell you that enough times. And don't make all the trees the same height. Make some higher, some lower. Remember, the lower it is in your foreground, that means these trees are closer than those. So they should be higher. And I want to make the trees on the right a little bit taller. And this one's not so great, so we'll just fix him up, just straighten him up like that. Let's see? Like that. Now I want this, remember I said I wanted those colors to show through, and this is going uphill a little, so we will just touch here and bring that out like so. A couple more trees there, and we're going to peek around the corner there. Just touch the corner of your brush. Now I'm going to give a couple of sweeps of brown, more brown, uh, well I call it brown, it's burnt sienna. And add some of that in here. Here. This was a bad piece of paper. So if you see any dirt on it, don't worry about it. I knew it would be covered up. This is not supposed to be a masterpiece. And usually the ones that you're not worried about being good, they're the ones that usually turn out better. But see how your eye goes in? The S, the S curve? After a while, you, you'll just do that without even thinking. Now we want to have, um, I'll make this a little green down here for some green things in the growing. And I'm letting that all dry by itself because uh, if you can, it's best for using the palette knife. You just let it dry on its own. And see how everything blended in the sky? And if you don't like the way the trees are, you can always put more detail in the trees. If you want more detail, you can put more detail in the trees after it's drier. So now we have the grass and uh, 
I'm going to just put a few more branches on this tree here. And there's a spot there, right? So put a tree in there, we'll get rid of that spot. And make a couple higher ones there. And this one's gonna be a little higher, yeah. There. See, this is a little yellow, a more yellow green. Now, when we're done, we can put peaks on the top of those trees. Well, let me grab my little brush here. And you don't really need a lot of paint. Now, don't remember, don't go like this, go straight up. And we can grab some paint right from there and just go up because you want it to be kind of fading out. Now, I need some more paint. There is a limit. You have to have some paint. And then you can put the, the branches on if you want. Right? But this gives you the point of the tree. Just look how just a couple of touches make the... This is kind of blunt. So we'll make the... That thins it out right, right quick. Right some quick, as we would say in our times. Some good, some quick. Now when you stop your brush, you see how that can't stop because the, the water here is wet and it sucked the paint right out of it so just two and that one slipped in uh, again it's better to have it slip in the note and, and if you don't like that just add it up and then just add a few branches and that took care of that now I get three soldiers here so I don't like that I'll make this one a little higher and <coughs> put a little um, space in here to break that up there, that's now they don't look so like soldiers. Same thing over here. I'm going to put a few more um, top, thinner at the top. Make sure you just a few branches here, a few branches there. They're a little blunt. I'm fiddling around waiting for the paper to dry. That's what I'm doing. So we can start using the palette knife. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There we go. Okay. And we'll just put in a couple of little guys back here, little trees growing. So you're there you are. You see how I just do that. I don't think about it. It happens. Now some people are much more uh, structured than I am. They have it all planned out, what's going to happen. Me? Well, what do we call it? Fly by the seat of my pants. It just kind of happens. But I like that. And this, see how the you get all the different colors? This tree here I don't like. See, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of lopsided. So I'm going to add that here. A couple branches there. And I'll put the main part of the tree here. Because it looked like it was lopsided. Now it's not. But we'll fix up that with the palette knife too. So it's coming. Now I'm looking down here and it's it's um, it's almost to the point. I'll grab one of my I think I'll dry it like this, rather than use the hair dryer, because I want it to dry now. I'm gonna start using it. And you just wait until the shine starts coming off the paper. And you have only a couple of minutes. To, uh, to do the work with the palette knife. Now down here it's just about ready. If I put the dryer to it, it would do it much quicker. But then it dries one spot more than the other and you can run into trouble. And I want to really show you how to use the palette knife. And while that's drying, I'm going to uh, show you my palette knife. <coughs> These are kind of bad ones. My wife gave me some new ones, but I haven't rounded the edges off yet. So here's one here. Let me show you. See? Oh, we're too focused. Uh, photo focus. Here. See, I rounded the edges off. New ones are got a sharp corner there. And I, I got rid of that sharp corner working backwards in this camera. There, see, I got rid of that sharp corner. 
Okay, so let's start here. Now I'm left-handed, so I go this way, and um, and you have to push down. Oh, I'll get me a piece of paper here. It might show you better. When you're using your palette knife, uh, push down and push across so it's on an angle if if you want wider. But uh, you got to push and 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 push the pigment and the water out and go and never dig in always use the back edge and push if you're going the other way go that way if you're going to make grass and trees go go that way okay so here we go because this is drying off just nice now this is going to be like some of the grass see there you see and it's still a little wet if you if you scrape it when it's still really wet it'll fill in dark if you just get it right it pushes the paint out and um, then you have you know like grass isn't all even and you can see how that's filling in and uh, which is okay because but I can just push there now so we'll let that and then I'm gonna start over here I'm gonna make that a little hilly not rocks just a little hilly and you can see this looks like grass already as soon as I do that and it gives you the impression that there's grass there now I can see my trees are drying the paper's just a little bit buckled it's wetter here than there so I'm going to take my trees get this feel of it don't be afraid to experiment I, I go ch -ch -ch -ch, right like this so here we go and I, I put some dead ones in now if I push that you see it's still wet up here it's going to come in dark and if, and if I don't, it'll come in light if it's dry enough. But I'm going to put uh, some did what's they're still a little, a little too wet, but they'll come out dark. That's okay. I'm going to squeeze tight here and put the rock in. You see, there's the rock. Now we have all kinds of colors underneath, which and which which is great for the rock, right? And the smaller one here. And we'll leave this stuff underneath. And we want some rocks over here, big rocks. Be careful you don't make them all the same size, same shape. It's easy to do. And you can uh, just muck around with it. Uh, this is still a bit wet. There, and see how that filled in? Well, we'll go down and push that out again. So there's, you can see that the rocks and if you want another big rock back in there, you can just put them in there. More rocks. See how nice and easy that is? And let's put a couple more back here. Now that's looking more like water than the path, but we're not going to mess around with that. No. Um, still a little wet. I'm going to use my dryer now. Right down here. And now I'm going to use my palette knife for the grass. And we be sure, grass, this old grass, it, dry, it, 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 it grows and bends and break, break, breaks off. And so you want it to be uneven, right? And, and as you get out further, you make it smaller. So it doesn't get distracting. There. That, that's good for the grass there. You can tell it's laying down. Now we do some here, same thing. Make it higher uh, in the corners and it just tapers off lower here. And then we have grass growing around the rocks, you know, underneath the rocks. And again, it's further back, so make it a little smaller. But you just want the compression of grass. Remember, um, one direction, another. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Right, and here and now we've got to get into the trees. Now I look, watch, it's starting to get too dry up there. But just do 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 do, just branches. And don't be afraid to experiment, don't be afraid to, don't be afraid of it. You'll get the feel of it the more you do. You, you, you just want it to look like branches, because you know branches don't grow all nice and even. And here, look at this, look at, see there's a good, perfect. 
and some old dead woods there we could have some branches hanging off them like so little ones down here and a few this is too almost too dry up the top but it's getting there see just do, 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 do. woods study the nature i mean we grew up in the woods well in our backyard up over the hill and some of these now lean out they're old hanging around the old dead woods and leave the stuff in the back there we go and we're going to have some more grass here this turned out not too bad i'm pleased sometimes they work sometimes they don't okay uh there we go i don't know what else it's time to leave it you know you have to you have to know when to stop so i'm going to dry it and i'll be back Now remember how I said things dry back? And look how much it dried back. Now we're going to add uh, just a few little details at the top of the tree so you can see them. A few more branches. Now remember, in the, in the trees are round. So when you're looking through the tree, you, there's thicker branches because you're looking through the center. And on the outside you can see through them better. And in the center you can't because you've got both sides and the trunk and all that good stuff. So you can add a few more details now if you want, but don't overdo it. And same with here, we just add a few darker branches and uh, leave it. Otherwise, we're going to mess it up. Same with this tree. Now, see, what made me start this is because um, uh, right here, you see these? Eh, don't like that. Too much the same. So we're going to just add a couple of little... And that's a little dark back there. Grab your have your Kleenex handy so you can just dab that out before it gets too dark. See now that broke that up. Alright, there we go. That's it. Now I'm gonna go get a mat. Show you what it looks like when it's matted. Okay, here's my mat. Now this is a 12 by 16 mat, so it'll fit a standard frame. Remember I said I don't worry about uh I make my Lots of room so I can move my mat wherever I want. And there it is. Now I'll bring it up so you can see it. So you can have a close look at the uh, details. So don't be afraid to experiment. And I'll tell you if you want to if you're afraid of wasting paper get some acid free four ply mat board and play around with it and uh, now you can't wet it like you can this paper it'll dry real quick but you can wet it enough to um, get the idea and play around with it but there's nothing like the real paper arches 300 pound to give the results. Nothing else will work the same. So I I know it's expensive, but you can use it both sides. And I suggest you use, do little paintings, like five by sevens, uh, and uh, then you don't waste your paper and you get the feel of it. Then you can grow bigger, bigger sheets later because you know how it all works. So again, thanks for watching and I hope this has been beneficial to you. Catch you later.